Welcome back everybody for another brand new video. Today we're going back into Resident Evil 9 speculations. Now an article we found from three days ago from ScreenRant.com is insisting the pros and cons of a third person sequel. So they're talking about if Resident Evil 9 comes out and they choose to use the third person experience instead of what Biohazard and Village have done with the first person experience. So we're going to read through the pros and cons just like we do on every video on this channel. You know how we do it. We read this article and then just share our thoughts and opinions on it and then let you guys have a discussion down in the comments. Um, now, if you guys do enjoy the Resident Evil content, make sure to just smash that thumbs up button and consider subscribing here if you guys haven't already. So the article, like I said, it's from ScreenRant.com. It says Resident Evil 9, pros and cons of a third person sequel. The last two Resident Evil games changed perspectives, but with the ninth mainline entry could return to third person, which has both benefits and caveats by Kyle Grattan. With the release of Village earlier this year, many have already been speculating about the seemingly inevitable Resident Evil 9. Although the series has been quite varied throughout its long and storied history, the last two entries, Biohazard and Village, have been entirely unique as far as a mainline game goes due to their first-person perspectives. The change was for the most part wildly celebrated in both Resident Evil 7 and 8, but that doesn't necessarily mean the next game will keep it. A majority of the series has been played from a third person's perspective, but reverting to that formula comes with both pros and cons. Resident Evil technically has its own origin in third person, though not exactly in the modern sense. The original Resident Evil and its two sequels use classic fixed camera perspectives. Players had no control over the, where the camera was pointed, similar to the pre-PS4 God of War games. The, the series' first three entries made it a pillar of survival horror genre, but its fourth also helped pioneer the third person shooter genre. The story of Resident Evil's third person era is one for a gradual shift towards the action genre. Rather than remaining primarily survival horror, Resident Evil 4 is still considered by many to be the best in the series. But 5, especially with its cooperative gameplay, signaled the beginning of the series losing its roots. Resident Evil 6 was widely criticized for almost entirely abandoning any a semblance of survival horror, thus the reinvention through the perspective shift in Resident Evil 7. There is now precedent in the series for Resident Evil 9 to e use either perspective, especially with the recent warm reception to the Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 remakes, but switching back to third person would come with some benefits as well as some detriment. Part of Biohazard and Village this was taken to another level by playing Resident Evil 7 on PSVR, and while Village does not have VR support, the, the first person perspective was key in immersing players as protagonist Ethan Winters. In Resident Evil 7, especially the first person perspective allowed the Baker Estates to be designed with narrow hallways, letting the game itself feel claustrophobic rather than just its gameplay. Putting the player fully in the main character's place with the first person perspective also helps the narrative by personal touch. Resident Evil 7 and 8 took advantage of this by having a story focused focused mainly on Ethan's family. Searching for his wife Mia in 7 and his daughter Rose in 8, the stakes are not necessarily as high overall when compared to the plot of Resident Evil 5 and 6, but they're just as important to the person the player is controlling. 5 and 6 are good examples of the loss of immersion that comes with a third person perspective. Each features multiple playable characters that are professional operatives trying to stop Umbrella. The characters themselves are invested, but there's very little emotional attachment to looking at the back of someone who has willingly put themselves in the midst of a bioweapon outbreak. On the flip side, the immersion that comes with first person pulling the player away from the character into third person lets the character develop independently of the player's experience. This was a particular point of criticism for Resident Evil 7, where players never even saw Ethan Winner's face. Though its sequel did a much better job of giving him a personality, the third person Resident Evil games have had years of success delivering iconic characters including Jill Valentine, Leon Kennedy, and Chris Redfield with the latter still being monumentally important to the series' overall narrative currently. For a large majority of history, Resident Evil has been primarily concerned with the evil exploits of the Umbrella Corporation through its various viruses and special task forces, responsible for thwarting them such as STARS and the BSAA. In regard, Biohazard and Village are large anomalies in a franchise that have functionally been anthology series. The third person perspective effectively lets the series jump between protagonists since they are easily seen and digested by the player. For instance, Leon Kennedy can have his RE origin told in two, then be removed from the spotlight for three, but 
before returning in a new capacity for 4. Each of his two games give him a separate and satisfying character arc. The last two Resident Evil games ramped up the suspense, but a large part of the series' horror elements come from the incredibly graphic violence that can be inflicted on the main character. Biohazard showed some of the early on in the Biohazard showed some early on, and then Village did a lot of damage on Ethan's hands, but the players getting killed in the third person can lead to some shockingly delightful animations. One that comes to mind is seeing Leon's head roll through a shower of blood when killed by an infected villager wielding a chainsaw. Resident Evil has had a lot of success creating chilling atmospheres, but a significant portion of its brand of terror lies in the body horror. More powerful enemies often have grotesque mutations, and even more common enemies like Lickers in Resident Evil 2 are hard to look at. Umbrella's viruses do absolutely repulsive things to their hosts. Part of the risk of venturing into various bioweapon ground zeros is the threat of being violently dismembered and being able to see that in third person has a great effect on the player. A major concern of Resident Evil 9 going back to third person gameplay would be falling into the series past mistakes of slipping towards an action shooter. The methodical nature of Resident Evil's more survival horror oriented entries appears to work a bit better in first person. Whereas the slow pace may not be as frustrating, a third person shooter gives players a wider perspective than an FPS. Even letting them see behind the controlled character a bit, this is just a symptom of its design, lends itself to more action packed gameplay. Another move away from Resident Evil's refound survival horror base isn't inevitable and the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes prove that. But it's not difficult to see how the series progressed toward fast-paced gameplay in the run from Resident Evil 4 to 6. Biohazard especially wouldn't have been possible with a third-person perspective because it has a claustrophobic level design. The necessity of space for both the main character and the camera leads to wide open spaces, and the next logical move is more enemies on screen, which is then quickly followed by faster gameplay, more effective guns, and higher mobility. These outcomes are by no means an inevitability, but Resident Evil 9 going back to third person runs the risk of encountering major criticism from the series' less celebrated entry. Many might assume that Capcom would stick with the first person after Resident Evil Village's financial success and critical acclaim, but the series as a whole has never been a one-trick pony. Third person has been the benefit of letting the player see the main character, potentially resulting in more character development and capitalizing on the series' penchant for body horror. An over-the-shoulder perspective can, however, be detrimental to players' immersion while simultaneously being a better format for action-packed gameplay. Only time will tell which route Resident Evil 9 decides to take, since returning the series to third person might come with quite a few caveats. So there you have it, that's kind of like the pros and cons of Resident Evil 9 sticking with either first person or moving away and going back to that third person camera. I don't think Resident Evil's ever going to go back to a fixed camera just because that's a little outdated. Um, my personal opinion, I think Resident Evil should stick with the first person. I think it is cool to be kind of more immersed in that claustrophobic feel, especially, you know, like in the house Benevenito. Um, that wouldn't be possible, it wouldn't have had that really cool horror element. Um, if it was in third person, so many other things just like roaming through the castles and stuff like that. Even the village, I mean, walking outside and walking into a house, it still felt somewhat claustrophobic. It just keeps that on your toes feeling. And I think adding in third person back, it feels a little bit more action oriented and not as creepy. The thing that helped with Resident Evil 2 remake, say, in my opinion, was the footsteps of Mr. X. So when you're in the mansion or the police station and you're just kind of roaming around, but you hear those footsteps coming, you knew to go back to a safe house. But I mean, with the first person stuff, you know, you can turn a corner and it's it, it right in your face and it's just so much more scarier, I think, in my opinion. So I think with Resident Evil 9, especially for just this trilogy, stay with the first person perspective. But I want to know what you guys think down below. Do you want to see Resident Evil move back to a third person camera? Do you want to see it stick with, um, first person or do you think it should have a switch where you can turn it off and on and you can switch between what um you know camera angle you want i know a lot of first, like shooter games do that ghost recons do it all the time now um i don't know how well it would work in resident evil because they've never done it but having that option i think just makes the game a little bit more versatile towards all its player base um, but like I said, I want to know what you guys think down below. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video, smash the thumbs up button, consider subscribing here if you guys are new and haven't already, and turn on the notification bell so you guys never miss uploads. 
be on the lookout for our YouTube partner giveaway once we hit a thousand subscribers and get our little partner badge. Um, we're going to be doing a giveaway here, so just be sure to check that out in the details. Um, and as always, my name is Ross, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.